He is a former special assistant in the Trump administration, in the Trump White House. Mark, uh, thank you for doing this. You're joining us on the phone. I appreciate it last minute. So let me ask you just straightforward, what's your initial reaction to this? This is perhaps a colleague of yours, perhaps somebody who shared the same title as you, a special assistant to president, not some mid-level staffer. What's your just, your, your gut reaction? Uh, well, thanks for having me, Chuck. Uh, I, I, like many other people, are, uh, just finished reading it uh, just moments ago uh, for the first time. And, and it concerns me for a couple of reasons. Well, first off, you know, we don't know the rank and, and the title and, and the position that, the, that this person holds. And, and while, I mean, and I, I'll include myself uh, in this as well, while my, my position sounds, you know, when I was in the White House, the special assistant to the president sounds very senior. There are a lot of meetings that took place at a lot higher levels than I was. And so we, we don't have that context to be able to fill out uh, how this person might think. And, uh, and to, to the point, I think, that was being made a little bit earlier, I, I do think it's a little concerning that we do have someone who is unnamed uh, that, is, that is making these kinds of allegations. If they are so concerned about the White House, the presidency, that they would, that they would make these charges, yet not so much that they were willing to risk their own job for it by putting their name next to it or stepping down. Uh, I think that there, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a credibility issue there. So you would urge this person to resign, go public and resign immediately. If this is how you feel, if this is what it is, that would be your advice for this form, colleague, former colleague of yours? Well, first off, I think it puts you in a very difficult position when if you are working still in that administration and you are working with my former colleagues, they don't know who you are. And so it creates a level of mistrust that we don't know that this person, whatever role, whatever position, whatever duties they may have, are they in fact going to be carrying those out to advance the causes of the administration? Or are they now going to be working on uh, some counter programming on uh, or running resistance against the administration's goals? And, and th th there needs to be a bond between those teams. And that's, that's regardless of politics. The White House staff are, are, are often very close because of the, the stress, the hours they put in, the sacrifices they make. And, and when you start tearing at those levels of trust, and it, it really tears that bond apart. And I do think it will, it will impact the ability of the administration to get things done. And people are human beings. Um, it's absolutely true. It's hard to imagine this doesn't create some sort of paranoia on a lot of levels. Mark, let me ask you this, and maybe you don't want to say, but... Do you recall conversations like this in the halls of the White House? No, uh, I, I can tell you that, and, and that's without a doubt. I can tell you there were serious policy debates, and I think one of the things that I took when I, in the very first glance reading of this of this op-ed, was, and what we see every day is that the president is willing to challenge orthodoxy, whether it be Republican orthodoxy about free trade and tariffs to achieve what he believes is the right move long term, that can definitely rub people the wrong way. And the president does surround himself with people who disagree. I mean, he had a very well-known, high-profile Democrat, Gary Cohn, not saying Gary Cohn was part of this, but I'm using this as an example, you know, in the White House arguing uh, against other people who brought a different perspective to things. And that's something that he has often done, is is making folks defend their position, pitting different positions against each other so you can reach the right conclusion. And I can see how that can rub that, some people the wrong way. We've seen that just using the tariffs uh, debate or also using the debate about how we are dealing with some of our allies, whether it's in trade issues or in NATO and their support yeah. of NATO. That can rub some of the more orthodox, traditional, mainstream the thinkers in these areas so, the wrong way. Mark, so what are you trying to are you trying to this. are you trying to argue that possibly the president's sort of knee jerk reactions at times to things um, that his staff took him too seriously? Maybe, and that's is that is that the I'm trying to understand or, that that they misinterpreted some of his uh, rants or something. 
Well, no, I think there's a lot of I think there are a lot of people who think that when a Republican is elected president or or a Democrat is elected president in, in a given in a given situation, that there are going to be certain long held beliefs that will carry forward through that through that administration and policies. And this is a president who has basically said is that if I believe we are getting, say, unfair trade deals and we have been getting them for years and many presidents of both parties have complained about it, I will. I will talk about tariffs. I will use something that goes right. against Republican orthodoxy to, to achieve my policy goal. And for those who have made careers or have long lists of experiences, you know, supporting no tariffs or lower tariffs, that can rub people and, and create that and create a, a tension between them that they're just not on board with. And I think that's where people have got to understand. Can you serve? Can you remember? He's the man that was elected. And he's Is seeking that, that goal and that here? outcome. Mark Lauder, is this what needs to happen here? John Kelly's got to have a staff meeting, or maybe the president's got to have a staff meeting and say, okay, in or out. You don't like me, get out. Is that what needs to happen? Well, I don't know if it'll be, I don't know if it'll be, it would be a staff meeting or, or something, is something as broad as that. But I think, you know, there are probably some folks in there that need to ask themselves questions and, and they need to know whether they can serve the administration and, and they need to make that decision for themselves. But they also need to know that if you're staying, you are committed to the goals of this this administration and this president, and by re releasing these things, you may, you're creating more of that division that you say you're seeking to to undo. Mark Lauder, I'm going to let you go. Really appreciate you taking the time. Um, uh, as our my people say, you're a good mensch. You're a mensch. So thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, Chuck. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.